Hallo Leute, ich bin Katja und ihr seht Deutsch für euch. Like I announced last week, today we're going to take a look at some adjectives. Since I don't really like the idea of just taking an alphabetically sorted list and just reading that down in like, I don't know, five episodes and just, you know, doing 20 a piece, we're just going to go by topic. So today we're going to learn a few basic adjectives to describe how something or someone looks or how you feel. Meaning that most of the adjectives I'm going to teach you today are going to be usable in all of the following sentences. That looks or that is. You look or you are. And I look, I feel, and I am. Although, of course, the use is not limited to that. Das sieht <laughs> aus. Das ist <laughs> Du siehst <laughs> aus. Du bist <laughs> Ich sehe aus. Ich bin. And finally, ich fühle mich. Well, let's get started. Gut. Now, as for the context of you're good, I'm good, he's good, whatever, um, I want to point something out. You can't really use that in the same way you do in English, meaning, you know, if you ask, do you want any more meat? And you just say, no, I'm good. You can't say that in German. If you were to say, ich bin gut, which you won't really find people saying, that would basically mean I'm, I'm a good person, I'm, I have a good heart. So that's a sentence you won't really encounter. It's grammatically correct, but it's not used. Perfekt. Schön. Or to over-exaggerate the word, wunderschön. Wunder means wonder or miracle. So you're basically saying something is stunningly beautiful. Hübsch. Or Bild hübsch. Bild means picture. So it's just as in English, pretty as a picture. Süß. This goes for both meanings of sweet, so cute, and also sugary, like sweet tasting. Süß. Hässlich. Can also be used in the same context as when you say that looks ugly in the sense of, you know, if you hurt yourself and it's a really, really bad wound, you can also say das sieht hässlich aus. Alt. Jung. As for things you can use that, for example, we say junges Gemüse, so young vegetables, um, not fully grown vegetables, but you don't really use that for things, do you? Groß. It's used for both tall and big. There's not really that much of a difference. So basically, if you want to say um, something is big, like big in every direction, you would either describe it as just as, you know, groß, or you could say dick, which is another word we're getting to. Whether something or someone is tall or big, doesn't matter, you describe it as groß, which is why German students don't really have kind of a problem with the word tall, because um, we learn big first, we kind of know that anyway, so we might run into that kind of awkward situation where you describe somebody as big when you just want to say that he or she's tall. It is also used for saying grown up, so like the colloquial big boy thing, you know, if you say you're a big boy now, in German you would use groß as well. Klein. Same word for small and little, same thing. Dick. <laughs> she said dick. <laughs> we have to differentiate between dick and fat. Um, fat, as you might have guessed, is fat. And dick is just, you know, if you're heavy, let's say that. So you're, you're round, but you're not like... But in the end, it's kind of up to the speaker which word he or she wants to use. Funnily enough, we can also use the word fett in German as P-H-A-T, so like fat. We write it the same way as the derogatory one, but um, you can also say that, you know, to say something is awesome, like fat. Dünn. Schlank. If you want to compliment somebody on how thin they are looking, you would be better off using the word schlank, since dünn can be used kind of derogatory and can sound kind of derogatory to people that, you know, feel like they're too thin. Toll. Super. It doesn't sound as nerdy as the English super. That's so super, man. You still actually use it. Mm, not as much as cool. 
which we just use, we just pronounce it more German, like cool, but it's still used, so that's fine. If you want to use that word, it's fine. Geil. Now this is kind of an iffy word for older people because originally it's, well, you know, let me start from the very beginning. The word geil originally referred to plants being ripe, like being able to have, like, to pollinate or whatever you call that. So after that, it kind of became horny because, well, I guess you could interpret that plant behavior as horny, ready to fornicate. So it became horny and after that it became awesome. So to older people and actually still to some people in my generation, like me, it kind of feels weird to say geil for awesome because it's always with that little weird sexual context. Uh, context. But it is used very often and it's kind of, well, it is awesome. You know, you have cool, which is cool, and then you have awesome, you know, geil. Kind of all of the other words we have for expressing how awesome something is are kind of old by now. So you would come across this word in, um, you know, colloquial speech, so you might as well learn it from me. Geil. Although I have to say, since there are these two meanings and it is still used for horny, you should be careful with using it for people. Because you can say, du bist geil, meaning you're awesome. But normally, if you say, du bist geil, sie ist geil, it's kind of more... It doesn't mean horny in that context, it basically means, you know, beyond sexy. It's like, really, really hot. So be careful. You can describe things as geil because nobody, nobody will assume that you are sexually attracted to a TV. But yeah, schlecht. Now, while this can mean bad, you can also use it in the sense of um, being nauseated, nauseous, I don't know, feeling sick to your stomach. You can say, mir ist schlecht. Müde. You cannot use this in the sense of being tired of something. We don't use that. You could say, ich fühle mich müde, but nobody really says that. Hungrig. Durstig. Krank. This word can be used for both being ill and being sick, of course, and also for something looking sick in the sense of, you know, looking gruesome. So you can also say, das ist krank, um, meaning, you know, that's just sick, don't do that. It can also be used for, that makes me sick, so, das macht mich krank. Okay, and with all the explanation, this took a lot longer than expected, but I'll leave it at that for today, and I hope the explanations did more than drag this out. And I will see you next week for our second part of the grammar and adjectives. Your random word of the week is der Draht. Bis nächste Woche. Tschüss!